Welcome to today's MJ News Digest, July 29, 2020. Here are today's headlines. Slash talks about Michael. MJ owes everything to Bobby Brown. Michael inspires Disney. Kanye West versus Michael Jackson. The Wiz Cinema release and Moonwalker Cinema release. What is going on? So we'll start with Slash. This is from the ultimateguitar.com. Uh, Guns N' Roses Slash talks uh, what it felt like to work with Michael Jackson. Explains what made him feel sorry for him. He was such a pro and he was such a effing talent the guitarist said uh, so this is uh, during a conversation with Kerrang not sure if that's the channel or the magazine Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash looked back on collaborating with Michael Jackson in the early 90s explaining how the whole thing came to be uh, Slash uh, I can't see this writing I need glasses uh, Slash contributed guitar <laughs> tracks in the studio on Michael's uh, Dangerous album okay so uh, give in to me and fuck what. Um, asked how he ended up on Dangerous, the guitarist replied, bear with me. Initially it was a phone call from my manager where he said Michael is trying to get in touch with you and I was like wow. So I called him back and he wanted me to play on Dangerous. We made a date and I went down to the record plant in Hollywood and he was there with Brooke Shields and that was very surreal. These were two people that I'd sort of grown up with in a way. So we hung out for two minutes and they went off to dinner and left me with this song. I did my thing, he really dug it and afterwards he kept asking me if i will be into doing this or doing that. I'd do some shows here and there and it was fun because he was such a pro. He was such a fucking talent from on high uh, that was the main thing he was so amazingly musically fluid such a treat to be around so what was it like to hang out with him uh, on stage his whole professional thing was really where he clicked when he wasn't working or in production or whatever it was then that you could see that he was sort of at the mercy of his own success all the people he had around him the tugging and the yes people you could tell that he knew 90% of them were full of shit I felt sorry for him in that sense I did a couple of shows with Michael in Tokyo and saw how the whole massive thing worked and he was the center of it the only time I really felt like he was in any kind of comfort zone was when he was actually on stage and right after that Guns N' Roses came to town we did our show and our success was massive but it wasn't as overwhelming as what Michael was going through it was just an interesting light looking at the two things and being careful about what you wished for interesting thank you for that slash okay so our next story Bobby Brown again claims that he taught Michael Jackson how to moonwalk oh dear uh, this isn't a story that Bobby hasn't shared before uh, Back in 2017, I think that's when he first claimed that he taught Michael Jackson the moonwalk. Uh, so let's see, where, we, where, we, where are we? So Brown recently chatted with Fat Joe on Instagram Live and during the conversation, Bobby Brown doubled down on his claims that he taught the King of Pop how to do his signature moonwalk dance step. Did he? Did Bobby Brown teach Michael how to do the moonwalk? I thought it was Jeffrey Daniels. Or was it Jeremy Daniels? I can't remember. I've got so many MJ facts in my head. Let's continue. I'm letting you know this is what happened. This is how the moonwalk was filmed. Brown began. Fat Joe couldn't contain himself and began screaming. Bro Brown continued. He perfected it, but I taught him how to do it. We can bring Ralph Tresvan, Belle Biv DeVoe all on. They were all there. We were in the foyer. Uh, it goes on to say that Michael Jackson debuted the moonwalk in 83 at the Jackson anniversary show. Actually, it was the Motown 25. Uh, and years later, in an interview with Time, Shalimar's Jeffrey Daniel said he was the person who taught MJ the move. Yet Brown has shared his version in the past. Oh, here we go. Including during a 2017 interview with The Cypher, where he stated that uh, the moonwalker was one of his signature moves. So, was it Bobby Brown? Was it Jeffrey Daniels? Uh, Bobby Brown could have been... I mean, Belle Biv DeVoe, they were after the 80s. Weren't they late 80s, early 90s? But then again, Belle Biv DeVoe were part of New Edition, which was around uh, at the early 80s. But ultimately, who cares? Michael Jackson perfected the move. Michael Jackson made the moonwalk really iconic. Uh, why is Bobby Brown still bringing this up? Our next story is which from thethings.com, which Disney villain was inspired by Michael Jackson? So Disney looks towards one of the most impactful figures in music history for influence and it truly shows in the film. Nice photo. Uh, so let's get down to, where is the Michael Jackson reference? So apparently it's something, uh, a character called Dr. Facilia. Um, now I'm a big Disney fan. Uh, but I've not come across Dr. Facilia. He looks quite, he looks like a new character. Um, I'm not that familiar with the new Disney films. I'm more a fan of the classic uh, Disney movies. Uh, let's have a look. Where's the meat and potatoes of this story? Where's the Michael Jackson? Here we go, Michael Jackson's influence. 
So as much as Cab Calloway's performances influ influenced Dr. Facilia in the long run, there was still more to do with the character, so Disney looked towards one of the most impactful figures in music history. Uh, Michael Jackson wound up being a massive influence on the final version of Dr. Facilia. Uh, Jackson's incredible performances can be felt when watching Facilia perform his most notable songs in the movie. Uh, okay, so it looks like it's a combination of Michael and Cab Calloway. Uh, Michael Jackson was noted for his style of dancing and movement. Thankfully, Disney animators know a thing or two about bringing movement to their characters, and some of Jackson's slickest moves can be felt in Facilia's performances in the film. It doesn't say what the film's called. Is it called Dr. Facilia? Let me know in the comments. What film is this? I want to see it. I want to see uh, Michael Jackson's moves and inspiration in uh, this Dr. Facilia character. So, Culture Hub, file this under the most stupid bloody thing you'll ever see today. <laughs> Don't get tight about Kanye West. Don't get tight, but Kanye West might be better than Michael Jackson. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm going to try and keep calm. Uh, Kanye West for 2024, uh, still a different, difficult concept to gauge, and yes, it's highly improbable, but let's bring it to a greater debate. Is Kanye West better than Michael Jackson? Well, I can end this right here, uh, but let's carry on. Uh, so we're talking about the king of pop versus the king of hip hop. Two masters that if they went head to head, who would win? My bets are on Ye. That's not my words, that's his words, or, or her words, whoever's written this. Um, apparently, uh, Kanye is the god, the king, the master of none. So, this art school. Uh, so, it's talking about uh, the amount of awards that Michael won during his realm. Um, starting in 1970, that's not correct. When 12 year old Jackson, that's not correct. So, get your facts right, please. Uh, and then it goes on to say about mentioning Thriller, okay, um, and uh, the groundbreaking album, the first one in history to generate seven top ten hits in the Billboard and Hot 100. Uh, so it says Jackson only won 13 Grammys, but the king of hip hop has 21 and counting. It could be because Kanye is still alive. Uh, Kanye West revolutionised the whole, the entire hip hop genre. Uh, Michael Jackson single-handedly saved the recording industry in the 80s. Uh, that's a fact that isn't mentioned in this article. Uh, what else is it going on about? Uh, talking about music. Uh, both Kanye and MJ have globalised to another level. I don't quite think Kanye is at Michael's level. Uh, it's talking about smooth criminal. Uh, inspiration. Oh, and we've got how Kanye's Yeezy shoes uh, have made a global impact. Mm, I think I prefer a global impact of love and uh, Michael's message over a pair of shoes. Uh, what else is it going on about? Bear with me because I'm not going through, I'm not reading the whole uh, article, but there is something that I do want to highlight. Uh, it's going on about Kanye's mental health, which I don't think really should be talked about. Um, ah, here we go. So, but this is disgusting. So, but talking about inappropriate Michael Jackson's video claims can't be neglected. This unjustifiable behaviour has brought loathsome discourse against him. I'm just taking a moment of silence to try to remain calm, try to find some inner peace. I think what we'll do is go down to the comments because someone else in the comments puts it a lot better than I can. Um, ah, before we do that, so when it comes to debating who is best, no one would deny Michael had extraordinary talent. Thank you. Still, Kanye might not be wrong when he says I am the greatest artist, artist of all time. He's wrong. Uh, so the comments, uh, Ca Carol Herald said in there, um, Andrew Batain said bullshit, um, uh, and then mentioning that comment about uh, the paedophilia claims, uh, Andrew goes on to say, those claims have been proven to be false over and over again, the unjustifiable behaviour of the media to neglect the hundreds of holes in these allegations and the accuser's ulterior motives has brought loathsome discourse against the media. Couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Andrew. He then goes on to say, watch Square One on Amazon Prime, a real documentary, and he links Amazon and YouTube. Uh, and also he says, what if you stopped diagnosing someone you didn't even know, you don't have a clue about Michael Jackson's medical history, how lupus affected his face, including his nose. He was never diagnosed with body dysmorphic syndrome, so who the fuck are you to do that? Why are you even talking about how MJ looked? Why is that relevant? Why do you bring that up? Andrew, you're a hero. Thank you. So, good news. The Wiz is uh, coming back to the cinema. He's on down the road to the gallery in St. Louis this weekend, The Wiz. 
uh, from 1978 opens on Friday. Uh, I'd love to see this film in the cinema. I've seen it countless times on the small screen, but I would love to see it at the cinema. Have I seen it at the cinema? Don't think so. Anyway, so it's playing on July the 31st, or it's starting July 31st for a week um, at uh, the Galleria Cinema in St. Louis, 30 St. Louis Galleria Street, Richmond Heights. Don't know where that is. I think it's America. And also Moonwalker is coming back to the cinema for one day only on the 30th of July. So that's tomorrow. And this is in Spain. This is at the Palace, Palacio della Presna Cine Solo 3. Uh, there's two showings, uh, there's one at 6 o'clock and I believe there is one at 9 o'clock uh, in the evening. I've seen, I've mentioned before, I've seen Moonwalker at least 10 times uh, at the cinema, hundreds of times at home. It remains my all-time favourite film and I would love to go to Spain and see this in the cinema again. So have fun if you go. So our YouTube recommendation of the day is from Damien Shields and this is the genesis of Thriller, a Michael Jackson documentary. It's an audio documentary, almost a bit like a podcast. It's really good. It's a deep dive into the making of the Thriller album. Uh, some really interesting facts and Damien kind of wraps things up really well and presents this in a really informative and entertaining way. So I will play a little bit of this and I will put a link for the full video in the description. Jones, who was still searching for new songs to replace the ones they had recently eliminated, thought that Pretty Young Thing would make a great song title. And so, Jones asked Jackson, Rod Temperton and a number of other songwriters to work on an idea around the title. And that's it for today's MJ News Digest. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe because the best is yet to come.